What's up guys, I'm Random Frank P. Today we're gonna be building this $450 gaming PC that is an eSports killer. Out of those titles I threw at it, we got well over 60 FPS on the highest settings, and it really impressed me in games like PUBG where we got over 50 FPS, and a title like GTA V we got over 100 frames. So for $450, this is a solid, solid gaming PC for sure. At that price point, we're gonna go over it all in this video, showing you the components, how we built it and stuff like that. And if you're interested in any of the components or what we use to build this, I will have them all listed for you in the description down below so you can check them out in case you're interested, as well as some alternatives if you have some more money to spend, if you wanna upgrade it, or if they're out of stock, I'll have all the products you see listed down below so you can check them out. But let's build this. First up is our case. This is from Rosewill, the SRM01. It's very affordable at $30, nothing flashy about it, but you're not going for aesthetics here. We're aiming for best bang for your buck. Although the brushed aluminum finish on the front is definitely minimal and classy, I don't mind that at all. The case is micro ATX, so it's on the smaller side, which is great for keeping it off to the side of your desk. And if it's on your desktop, it's not gonna take up much space at all. It's very compact. For IO, on the right side of the case, you have a USB 3.0, and then on top, you have your two USB 2.0 ports, your mic in and audio out, the power button, you know, your standard IO, and plus on the front of the case, you have a single slot for a DVD drive in the front with that five and a quarter inch bay slot. And in the back is a single rear fan included for ventilation. Really not bad at all for $30. That's like anything from Red Lobster. Now the base of everything here we're gonna be using is the motherboard, you gotta start with that. We're going with the MSI H110M Eco Board for a few reasons. One, it supports our LGA 1151 CPU. Two, it's very affordable at $60. And three, the Eco Board's gonna consume less power overall. So you know, keep the electricity bill down at the same time. And when you compare this to the more expensive MSI H110M Gaming Motherboard, the only difference there is gonna be that it has red accents and red LEDs, that's really it. This has got 10 total USBs, DDR4 memory boost, integrated 7.1 audio support, everything you're gonna need for a budget motherboard. Next is the CPU, and this is important because you wanna keep the overall price of the build down but still get great performance at the same time. And we're definitely getting that here with the Intel G4560 CPU. So this 4560 has two cores, but it also supports hyper-threading as well. So this is pretty much like a little brother of the i3, but you're saving a lot of money and still getting great performance at 3.5 gigahertz. Trust me, for only around $80, this is a phenomenal CPU for starting off your PC build. Now as a RAM, we're going with the single stick of 8 gigabytes crucial RAM. It's clocked at 2133 speeds, and honestly, 8 gig is gonna be more than enough for this build. And I actually bought this during the summertime when it was like around $50, but RAM prices are skyrocketing. I'm serious, look at this price history chart from PC Part Picker. My suggestion, buy RAM now, load up while you can, because this steady increase over the year hasn't showed any signs of slowing down. And then for the GPU, we're going with the EVGA 1050. I picked mine up for $110, and when you're talking about the budget PC, you know, getting the most performance for your money, the 1050 is a great option. You're still gonna be getting good frames while gaming, and since we have a budget build going on, we're gonna be benchmarking our games at 1080p. But what's also great about this 1050 and the combo with the Intel 4560 is it's not gonna be held back or bottlenecked at all. So you're getting 100% of your money's worth. But if you do have some extra money in the end, you can probably always upgrade to the 1050 Ti with four gigs of RAM. They are kind of tough right now to find with the holidays, but I'll put it down below for you. And what's also nice is the graphics card is powered by the motherboard, so you don't actually have to plug this into your power supply in order for it to work. Then to finish off the PC, go with either the 430 or 500 watt power supply from EVGA. They're both $35, I'll we'll list them both down below. I'm using the 430 watt version. EVGA is highly reputable, and either option is gonna be more than enough power to fuel this build. And you can see with this case, our PSU is gonna be top mounted. Then lastly for memory, again, you'll have the option. If you want more space for more games, pick up a one terabyte Seagate hard drive for like $45. But if you value blazing speeds or are gonna be installing a handful of games, go with an SSD. You can get 120 gigs for under $50. That's gonna be up to you. I'm using an SSD for this. Okay, so now that you saw all the hard work components we're using, we'll power it on. Blue light means it's all good to go. And now we're gonna head over and do some benchmarking. And that's gonna be the most important stuff. We wanna see how this actually does perform for the price overall. So let's do that now. Now a popular esports game is CSGO, and it's really not a taxing game at all. And everything on its highest settings, we got 167.9 FPS. I knew it was gonna handle this game just fine, didn't think it was gonna do that good, but you definitely can't complain. Next was Rocket League, again at the highest settings, and this is also a very popular esports game. And while I was just messing around playing, we got a 65.9 FPS average. 
Then I played a little bit of Overwatch to see how this would perform, because not only is it a very, you know, beautiful looking game, it's also pretty fast paced and action packed at points. And at the epic graphical settings, which is everything turned up to its highest, we got 68.6 FPS. It's also great to see the minimum frames we got was 49, the max at 72. But again, this was at the epic settings. You can also probably turn it down and most likely get into the 80s or 90s. And then just for fun, a very popular benchmarking game is GTA 5, because that is an open world game with at times a lot going on. This was at the high graphical setting, so it does go up to like very high and stuff like that. We kept everything at the second highest, just at high. And you can see up top, we're barely hitting that two gigs of VRAM threshold. And we got a nice 108.9 FPS. While you can tell the graphics definitely aren't as pretty as they could be, they definitely look on point to consoles, I'd say. But instead of getting just around, you know, maybe like bare minimum 30 on consoles, we're getting over 100 FPS. And lastly, real quick before we move on, I wanted to round it out with Battlegrounds. Also very popular, one of my favorite games, but it is definitely not that well optimized. And what I did here was have everything at the lowest graphical settings, but for textures, I turned them up to medium. I was actually kind of surprised. We got 51 frames per second with a minimum frames being 17 and a max being 81. So again, while it's just at 1080p, 51 is still pretty impressive. Especially for a game like this that is constantly being upgraded, it's still in beta, and it's not that well optimized at all, 51's pretty good. So while there's a ton of different titles out there for competitive esports games, I just wanted to benchmark, you know, CSGO, Overwatch, and Rocket League because they're still very popular and they're each very different from each other with their own graphical settings and their own pace in the game. And for the most part, it handled it just fine, as you saw all the highest settings for those three titles. And I'm sure it would blow other games out of the water, like uh, League, World of Warcraft, Diablo, anything like that. I was pretty impressed overall. And even as you saw with GTA 5, while we were still on the high settings, which is pretty good, over 100 FPS. So for the most part, around $450, I am very very impressed with the performance we got here with that GTX 1050 from EVGA. And that Intel G4560 CPU really helps this build out. Now, while I could have made this video like a half hour long going over more benchmarks and titles and stuff like that, I wanted to keep it more concise for you guys and just see how I handled those five games that I threw at it. And like I said, very, very happy. So don't forget, check the links in the description down below. I'll have all the components and hardware we use for this PC down below so you can check it out as well as some alternatives and stuff like that if you want to check other components if they're not in stock or maybe some other components that are possibly a little bit higher in price range if you have some extra money to spend check the links down below it'll all be there for you if you like this pc give it a thumbs up to show your support feel free to follow me on twitter at random frank p and last if you haven't already hit that subscribe button well i'm random frank p hope you enjoyed have a good day